Hi there, I'm Paul Belflem and this is Industrial Organization. Today we're going to take a few minutes to talk about vertical differentiation and the objective is to analyze a stylized model of vertical product differentiation and describe the main effects at work. If you're interested and want to know a bit more about this topic, I refer you to chapter 5, section 5.3 of the textbook. Let us start by recall the difference between vertical and horizontal differentiation. In a previous presentation, we talked about horizontal differentiation, and you may recall that it's a matter of different tastes among consumers. Some consumers prefer one product, other consumers prefer another product, and so if these two products are priced at the same price, then there will be demand for both products. Okay, here this is different in the sense that all consumers agree that one product is preferable to another. Think of one product having a higher quality than the other product. In that case, if the two products are sold at the same price, well, there will be no demand for the low quality product and all consumers will buy the high quality product. Okay, so this is what we want to describe here. I'm going to walk you through a particular model. We will not go through all the details here and the main message uh, that I will give you is that there is a lot of similarities between horizontal and vertical differentiation when it comes to analyze these two-stage games where firms choose first how much they want to differentiate and then they choose the price. Okay, so this model is about quality and we will um, represent quality by a letter SI, I being the product, SI being the quality of the product, and this quality can be taken within some interval uh, with a lower bound, this is S lower bar, and an upper bound, which is S upper bar. Okay, and this is a number that can be taken uh, on the real line. Okay, now consumers are characterized by a parameter theta, which represents their preference for quality. Okay, and theta is also something that can be given in that can be taken in some interval between theta lower bar and theta upper bar. Okay, so the interpretation of, of this parameter theta is that if you compare to consumers, the consumer with a larger theta is a consumer who is more sensitive to quality changes. Okay, and remember that uh, differentiation is a matter of preferences of the consumer. So this theta is the characteristic of a con consumer, and I repeat, this is, it, it is a measure of the sensitivity of the consumer towards quality changes. Okay? Now, any value of theta can be taken between uh, the two uh, boundaries, so we assume a uniform distribution, and there is a mass m of consumers, which is equal to the difference between the larger bound, theta upper bar, and the lower bound, theta lower bar. Okay, well this is just for the technical description of the model, we are not going to use this so much. Now, as we did in the uh, analysis of horizontal differentiation, we assume that consumers have a unit demand. So they choose one unit of one of the two products. Um, they don't have any utility for a second unit. Right? Now, what is the utility of a consumer characterized by some parameter theta? from buying one unit of a product I, which is sold at price P I, well, there is some base utility R plus a utility that depends on the parameter of the consumer, the taste of the consumer for uh, quality changes, multiplied by the measure of quality of this product. Okay, so this means that for a given, uh, for a given, uh, sorry, a given consumer, so for a given value of theta, the utility increases with the quality of the product. So there is a higher quality for, uh, sorry, a higher utility for a higher quality, and this is true for any consumer. So this characterizes what we were saying before, that all consumers agree that one product is prefer preferable to another, which is also to say that consumers agree that having a larger quality is better for them. Okay, so this is what we have here. A larger SI increases the utility for all consumers, right? And the other thing that we have in this element here is that for a given quality, uh, the larger the value of theta, 
the larger the utility of the consumer. Okay, and so this uh, is a translation of this assumption that theta is a measure of how much consumers are sensitive to quality changes. Right? Now, there are two firms, okay, and they play a two-stage game. Uh, they first choose the quality, so they choose SI within this range, S lower bar, S upper bar. And once they have done so, they choose the price. Okay, so at the second stage, when they choose the price of the product, they observe the quality choices that have been made before. And to simplify our analysis here, we assume that the cost of producing a unit of any quality, uh, Ci, is equal to zero. Okay? Now, as before, when we were analyzing um, horizontal product differentiation, we used the concept of subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. So we solve the game backwards, starting from the price stage, which is the second stage. We want to be able to say which prices the firms are going to choose for whatever uh, combination of qualities they've chosen in the first stage. And once we know that, we can move to the first stage and analyze the quality decisions of the firms. They choose the quality anticipating the effect that the change in quality will have on the price equilibrium. Okay, so it's because firms are forward-looking when they make their decisions in the first stage, they anticipate the effect on the price decision this is because firms are uh, thinking in this way that we need to solve the game backwards and looking for the sub-game perfect Nash equilibrium. So before we go through the analysis, uh, what kind of results can we anticipate? Well, we already know that firms will choose different qualities at equilibrium. And the reason is very simple. If they choose the exact same quality, we are back in the Bertrand model, where we know that prices will go down to marginal cost and firms will make zero profits. Okay, why isn't this an equilibrium? Because any firm there has an incentive to change the quality in the first stage and differentiate itself from the competitor so as to relax price competition and make positive profits. Okay, so the situation where firms would choose the same quality cannot be part of a subgame perfect match equilibrium because there is an incentive for any firm to deviate and choose a quality which is different from the quality of the other firm. Okay? Now the question remains, how much, uh, what would be the level of differentiation? Would they choose qualities which are rather similar to one another or as different as possible? Okay? So what we will see is that there are the same uh, two effects at play uh, in this model as we had with horizontal differentiation. Okay, so there is the same mix of a competition effect. This is exactly what we were seeing in the sense that firms want to differentiate. They want to choose different qualities because that allows them to relax price competition, which means they can set higher prices and so make higher profits. So this is one force, but at the same time, they would prefer to choose a quality which is uh, more appreciated by the consumer. So both of them here would like to produce the high quality. Okay, this is the market size effect. They want to meet consumers' preferences. The difference with horizontal differentiation here is that there is one, uh, I mean, there is one quality that, uh, for which there is a larger demand, and this is a high quality. Okay, All right. So in what follows, we'll see briefly in this model how these two uh, forces balance one another. Okay, so assume without loss of generality that a firm 2 is producing the high quality. So suppose that S2 is larger than S1. Okay, so first of all, if we want to analyze the, the price game, we need to know how consumers react to prices. So we need to find out the demand functions. Okay, and we proceed in a very similar way as we did for horizontal differentiation. As consumers choose to buy from one uh, firm or from the other firm, we look at the identity of this consumer who is just indifferent between buying from any firm. Okay, so this is what is done here. Uh, call this consumer indifferent theta hat. Well, for this consumer, you must have an equality between the net utility of buying from firm one, quality one, and from buying from firm two, that is from buying quality two. Okay. If you solve for the parameter 
uh, theta hat, this is what you obtain. So this is the identity of this consumer who would be just indifferent between buying from one firm or from the other firm. And you see that uh, th this, the identity of this consumer is given by the ratio between the difference in prices and the difference in uh, quantities. Okay? And of course, this is true for some prices that are such that this uh, theta hat is somewhere between the, the admissible values theta lower bar and theta upper bar. Okay, so if we put everything together, we can find a profit function of firm one. Firm one, I repeat, is the one producing the low quality. Well, there are three possibilities. Either it sells nothing if its price is too large with respect to the price of the other firm and the difference in qualities. Okay, or it sells to the whole market. This is the, the lower branch here if the price is sufficiently small with respect to the price of the other firm and the difference in qualities. And for intermediate prices, okay, uh, the firm one uh, gets all the consumers with a value of theta which is below theta uh, hat. Okay, so this is what is meant here. Remember that we assume that every consumer buys one unit and we have a uniform distribution of values of theta between the, the two boundaries. Okay, so if you, you want to, sorry, if you want to draw this, here is the profit of firm one, here is its price, and so um, if the price is sufficiently small, you would have the whole market, and so the profit increases with, uh, linearly with the price, and at some point, you share the market with the other firms, and uh, the higher your price, the lower the quantity you sell, and up to some point where uh, you don't sell anything anymore. Okay. Now, you could do the exercise, the same exercise for firm two. You would have a, a similar profit function. And we realize from there that there is a, a unique maximum. So that allows us to use calculus to find out um, the best response function of the two firms and thereby uh, the price equilibrium. Okay, so I will spare you all the computations here. Uh, I just give you immediately the result. And this is what you obtain. This is the Nash equilibrium in prices for given qualities S2 and S1 with S2 being larger than S1. Okay. Um, this is the equilibrium as long as the range of values of theta is sufficiently large in the sense that theta upper bar is at least as large as two times theta lower bar. Okay, so in words, it means that we, we need a sufficiently large diversity of uh, sensitivities to change in qualities. Okay, so we need, in other words, that the consumers need to be sufficiently heterogeneous, different from one another. Okay, now beyond the computations, uh, which I repeat, I don't want you to go through, um, the, the main uh, lesson we draw from this equilibrium is that both prices, P1 star and P2 star, are increasing in a difference S2 minus S1. Okay, so this means that if the qualities chosen by the two firms are more different, then both firms, even the one with the low quality, firm one, both firms are able to set higher prices at equilibrium and so to make higher profits. Okay, so we already guess what will happen in the first stage if it's possible to increase the profits of both firms by increasing the difference between the two qualities, we expect actually in the first stage firms to choose different qualities. Okay, so this is what we want to check. If we use now the prices we have found in the second stage equilibrium to express the profit function, okay, this is uh, what you get. You've got profit functions that only depend on the qualities and you see as we were uh, expecting that these two profit functions increase with the difference between S2 and S1. Okay, So it's not a surprise for firm 2 which is uh, producing the large quantity, the high quality, but it's more of a surprise for firm 1 which is producing the low quality. Okay, So in a sense firm 1 would benefit from decreasing its quality for a given quality of firm 2. Okay, so this means that the, the firm that is producing the low quality um, prefers to, pr to produce even a lower quality because on the one hand what it loses 
from the fact that consumers are willing to pay less for this quality, this is more than compensated by the fact that there is increased product differentiation and so prices can be set at a higher level. Okay, so let me repeat, firm one is producing the low quality, but nevertheless, it has an incentive to produce an even lower quality because that increases the product differentiation and an increase in product differentiation allows both firms and especially the firm with the low quality to set higher prices and make higher profits. Okay, and so what will be the equilibrium quality choices? Well, if they've got to choose simultaneously, there are two potential equilibria, uh, which are that one firm chooses the low the lowest possible quality and the other firm chooses the highest possible quality but we don't know which firm is going to do that okay obviously if they could choose uh, sequentially well the first firm will go for the large quality and the second firm therefore will have no other choice than differentiating as much as possible and choosing the lowest quality okay so to sum up in markets with in which products can be vertically differentiated, firms offer different qualities in equilibrium so as to relax price competition. Okay, so that's uh, a general lesson. In the particular model we have looked at, the, the firms will go to a maximum differentiation, okay, because they benefit so much from relaxing price competition that it pays to produce the lowest quality uh, for one firm. Okay, even though consumers are not willing to pay that much for that low quality. That was the message I wanted to convey through this short presentation. Thank you for your attention.